everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. Are you looking to get more detail out of your images? Well today, I'm going to show you how your telescope and camera combination directly affect your resolution capability. And you can use this concept on any potential camera candidate that you have to see how they affect your resolution capability. And more importantly, to make sure that any camera you choose matches your telescope. And if you find this video useful, Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump on in and talk about resolution. I think as astrophotographers, we all share at least one goal, the highest possible resolution. We're all trying in one way or another to pull out just a little more detail from the beauty of our night sky. Today, I want to show you how to take one step closer to that goal. To achieve higher resolution images, there's one concept that needs your attention. Your camera and telescope combination directly influence your resolution. It's tempting to grab a scope, find a camera with amazing specs, and expect amazing results. But that's not always the case, and sometimes we're left disappointed. Let me show you why. Here, we're on the Astronomy Tools website under their Field of View Calculator. And what I want to do is show you how to calculate the resolution capability of your telescope to camera combination. To do that, we're going to go into Imaging Mode, and then we're going to choose a deep sky object, any one of them just for fun. Next, we want to plug in our telescope and camera information. You can either use the drop downs and locate your equipment, or if you know the specs, you can go ahead and just plug it in. For my Skywatcher 200P and Carbon Star 200, my focal length is 800 millimeters, and my aperture is 200 millimeters. For the camera, I'm going to use the drop down and I'm going to scroll all the way down and locate the ASI 2600. What I want you to notice is resolution. For this telescope to camera combination, I have a resolution capability of 0.97 arc second per pixel. What does that mean? Each pixel covers 0.97 arc second of sky. Now, watch what happens when I swap out to the ASI 585. Our resolution instantly gets better. We now have a resolution capability of 0.75 arc second per pixel. In other words, each pixel covers 0.75 arc second of sky. So what does that actually mean and how does that help us capture higher resolution images? Let's visualize it. Here's a parking lot full of cars as seen from above. Now imagine we're using the combo with 0.97 arc seconds per pixel. Our pixels are large and each one covers more sky. Those pixels span broad areas, but they can't resolve what's happening inside them. We're left with unresolved detail lower resolution. Now let's shrink those pixels. Each one now covers a smaller area of the parking lot. And look at what happens. We can start to see the details between the cars. The finer structure emerges. Think of it like this. A rigid wooden board laid across a sculpture will miss all the shape underneath. But a flexible chain link mesh it conforms to every dip and curve. That's what smaller pixels do for your sky. So now that we understand pixel scale, here comes pesky rule number two. There's always a trade-off. Nothing in this hobby is free, not even resolution. Higher resolution demands more accurate guiding, and guiding can absolutely make or break your night. I've got full videos covering PHD2, guiding RMS, and real-time tuning, but here's the bottom line. With my 200p and ASI 2600, my pixel scale is 0.97 arc second per pixel. 
That means I want my total RMS to stay below 0.97 for optimal results. With the ASI 585, now I'm chasing 0.75 or less total RMS. And that's harder. Your mount, balance, seeing, they all have to be tighter. Another trade-off to consider, and this one can really shock you if you're not prepared, field of view. As we shrink our pixels, so do we shrink our field of view. Now, back in the Astronomy Tools website under Field of View Calculator, if we go back into imaging mode, choose any deep sky object, and plug in our equipment information for focal length, 800, aperture, 200, or if you're doing this yourself, make sure to put in your personal equipment information. And I'm gonna start again with the ASI 2600 and I'm gonna add it to the view. Here we see M5, and then we see a red rectangle. This red rectangle represents the field of view with this particular camera and telescope combination. But now, watch what happens when I add the ASI 585. When I add that to the view, all of a sudden we have a much much smaller field of view. And again, that's because the pixels on the ASI 585 are much smaller, thus shrinking our field of view. Now, with this, we get higher resolution, but the trade-off is some objects that would have normally fit in the ASI 2600 field of view may not quite fit in the 585 field of view, but that's okay. All that that means is some objects need a mosaic to capture completely. And hey, that's not a bad thing. Mosaics are actually very fun and I have videos going over them. Here's another thing to consider. As you compare cameras with different pixel sizes to your telescope, your telescope to camera relationship changes in ways other than resolution capability. Your telescope and camera must be matched. It's easy to fall in love with a scope, grab an amazing camera, and expect fireworks. But if they're mismatched, your images may suffer in ways other than resolution, and that can lead to frustration and defeat. So now that we understand what pixel scale means, let's learn true telescope to camera matching. Back on the Astronomy Tools website, we're gonna head over to the CCD Suitability Calculator. That's located under Calculators, CCD Suitability. We're gonna use this to learn how to truly match a telescope and camera. Now, just like last time, we can either use the drop down to choose our equipment, or if you know the specs, you can go ahead and just type them in. For my focal length, I'm gonna choose 800 millimeters. And for the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and locate the ASI 2600. My seeing conditions generally fall within the two to four full width half max, so I'm gonna leave that as is. Now, as you can see, this telescope and camera combination falls within the green. But one thing to keep in mind, as seeing changes, so does the compatibility between the camera and telescope. In other words, if I take seeing and move it to good seeing, notice how we shift. On the flip side, if I choose poor seeing, I'm now in the oversampling range. If you're not sure what your seeing conditions are, it's actually pretty easy to figure out. Grab a few of your subframes, throw them into PixInsight, and PixInsight can calculate the full width half max. That'll give you a general idea, and then in this dropdown, you just choose what you have. Now, watch what happens when I choose the ASI 585. Now, we already know that the ASI 585 gives us better resolution with this telescope. However, notice how we are borderline on this grid. We are right next to oversampling. So as we covered earlier, 
we do need to make sure that our guiding is dialed in. And with this particular setup, if my seeing goes for the worse at any point, I could slip into the oversampling range. And in the next video, we're going to be covering oversampling and undersampling. Resolution is powerful, but it's only one piece to the puzzle. Don't chase the numbers blindly. Instead, aim for balance between your camera, telescope, guiding performance, and the skies above you. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? What is your current resolution capability? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.